Welcome internet people. Today we will do some relaxed infrastructure coding. But first, let's celebrate that I finally got around to do some coding today. Cheers. So in the previous stream, we built up some functionality for helping us test and debug heap allocations. We are doing this uh, by using our custom memory manager, which so far is only a wrapper around the standard C um, heap allocation functions. This will probably change later. And by now we have already some nice functionality that we can uh, verify in unit tests whether the heap is clean again after the test has completed. So we can check that there, is, there are no leaks, at least no leaks going uh, no leaks from functions going through this custom memory um, allocator and we will make sure that uh, our code only uses this this custom allocator interface. And today we will just improve the infrastructure and add more features. The first thing I want to do is currently when we grow an array by reallocating Um, we currently do a very stupid update of the debug information. So we first remove the, the block and then we add a new block again. And what I actually want to do is to do an update of the block information and also record uh, that we did a reallocation so that we can, uh, for example, get some statistics on how often we reallocate and so on. And so uh, let's do that. I also want to add that this reallocating that we currently do is not the only um, conceivable way that we can uh, use to grow dynamically uh, growing arrays. But it's for now it's the simplest one and we will use that for now and we can later extend the custom locator to maybe do um, maybe have other other options for growing arrays that for example use the virtual memory management in a smart way so let's see but first <clears throat> here we currently do the check and remove block and what I actually want to do here is I want to do here I, first, I want to get the block info and then I want to do some updates. So we will have a function check block info without the removing part. And then we will do the updates. So Let's for now put this here that we do not don't forget. And we will not do the adding at the at the end. So first we need this this function. We will do it by refactoring the existing function uh, that does the check and the remove. So let's get off, rid of the remove. We will also return the block info pointer from this function. So the first part will be exactly the same. We do a stupid linear search. We uh, check the consistency of the sizes. Uh, one thing that changes is um, 
and we should not no longer call this the free uh, the, the the freeing location um, this is some kind of reference location where, where we reference from and these one are the allocation maybe let's do like this let's um, let's call the latter ones just file and line and the first ones we call a lock file and a lock line so we know this is the location from which the the block the memory was originally allocated so this is the removing part this will go away and we will simply return the block info here and here we have to actually an error when we don't find the block just to make the compiler happy we will put this here but this will never execute and let's now reuse this function here check block info mem pointer size file line and here we can actually we, we assert that this is non-zero because we do not expect a return if it's not found um, and now the removal part let's see if we have all the information necessary for the removal we will no longer have the failure path here so this is okay um, yeah so we have everything we need the removal currently requires only to know where the block is that we want to remove oh no it also it also needs an index so we will need to modify this calculation um, but the index we can easily calculate by doing some pointer math so this is the index is nothing but the pointer minus the beginning the pointer to the beginning of the array, array. it should be this one so um, let's just add the prototype and we have completed this function implementation now for the update um, I, I will probably wrap this also in a debug helper function to keep the allocation code and array growing code it as clean as possible so because I want to have clean separation of the debug code from the rest of the, of the from the actually productive code and so we can get rid of this okay come on expressions we will keep an eye on that because I made a note here for myself by the way I don't know how you like the new font size with the new uh, bit rate so if you have any um, trouble reading things or uh, seeing where I'm currently at in the code uh, please drop me a line in the chat and we will adjust things so what do we want we we definitely need to update the pointer to the block and the size so pointer gets the new pointer that is the new buff new buff pointer and size gets the new size however I must be careful because new size is actually a bad name 
because that's the new number of elements. So we shouldn't call it size because normally my convention is that anything called a size is in bytes like returned by the size of operator which is actually in characters but uh, nowadays that's the same as, as in bytes or octets octets if you want to call them like that it's nowadays all the same things so in order to keep this more readable and less error prone we will actually split this up in two variables we will call the, the one the new number of allocated elements and the new size will then actually be a size namely the, the new number of allocated elements times the element size now we just need to make sure to use the new and allocated here here we can actually use the new size and get rid of the multiplication here This is the new and allocated. We could also report report the element, element size here. Element is a size t, which I actually don't like because that's one of these types that you never know how large it is. Hmm. And then you need this strange set format, I think. I really, I think I, in the end I will get rid of all these variable size types like size t and just use u in 64 everywhere for them. I just have it currently here because this is usually, the element size usually comes from a size of um, operator and, and that gives us a size t. So let's put the element size here. Bytes each. So now we can actually also um, reduce the number of common exp sub expressions here. Oh, no, this needs to be the old size because this is the one that is checked against the debug information. And for this one, we do not yet have a convenient. So let's also calculate um, the old size here for the debug stuff. This we will only need for the debug stuff. This is the old number of allocated elements times the element size. So let's use here the old size. And this is also the thing that we subtract here, the old size, and we add the new size. So now we have also done this refactoring of the common sub-expressions. Which here is, is uh, mostly for readability because I would expect the compiler to do it anyway in an optimized build. And also in an optimized build we will not have the debug code at all, so well, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Um, the size is now updated to the new size. So let's keep the debug stuff a bit separated from the rest. Okay, here we have, hmm. Here 
here. This is a question. Where should we pass the descriptive information? Because currently also for growing arrays, also for growing arrays, I pass some descriptive text. I don't know if I want to keep that actually. So for, for allocating something, it's definitely very useful to have some descriptive text. So we know if we dump the list of heap blocks, what each block is for. For reallocating or growing, the question is, could there be different interesting interesting ways of growing that's the one thing that use the same core i'm not sure about it the second question is could um could the description change substantially because uh, we grow the array this could happen for example if you want some size information in the description. For example, currently I have for bitmaps, I put the width and the height of the bitmap into the descriptive uh, string. And something like that could change if we resize the bitmap. I'm really not sure about that. Currently, we don't resize bitmaps ever, so. I think uh, let's postpone this decision. For now, we will not update any descriptive information here. And let's just see how, how we like it. What we will do is we will increment a realloc count counter relocations plus plus so this is something we will add to the block info um, let's make it 32 bits and Whenever we add a new block, we will set this to zero. And so here we increment it. Let's see if the rest is okay. So uh, this is the productive part of the code. So setting a new buffer pointer and the new size. This is again debug. Okay, this we can actually now do in one. Or, or at least in one place. So I don't combine it directly because I don't know. Actually, I do know that they are unsigned. So actually, I, I, we can combine it because it has some well-known semantics. Um, it doesn't matter if this is larger than the new size is larger than the old size or smaller. I mean, it should always be larger in our case because this is a growing function. But either way, it shouldn't mind if we have a, a modular wrap around here, it will still do the right thing. So that's, that's not a problem. So we can combine this. And, and here usually, usually my style is to put some parentheses for things like this. Um, I'm a bit, my brain is a bit scattered today. So let's, we definitely want to print this reallocation information. So 
So when we print the whole thing, I actually, I think I want to have this, this in, more, in a bit more compact format. So maybe let's just print file colon line the description in quotes and after the size we will print some reallocation information so this will be a string mm -hmm. what is the i would like to print Now let's just keep it simple for now and then keep print just the, the reallocation counter in parentheses. Ah, yeah, now I remember what I wanted to do. I wanted to check against overflow for the reallocation um, counter because we increment it here and as it is a 32-bit counter, it's not completely unimaginable that it will overflow. I mean, nah, not really, because we, <laughs> we double the size every time. So if the size doesn't start out as zero, which shouldn't be allowed, this is also something that we should actually assert against. So the number of allocated Elements should always be strictly positive at the beginning. Otherwise, doubling it won't do a lot. And yeah, as we are doubling every time, we for sure cannot have an overflow here. That, that would be that would be silly. But nevertheless, let's be extra paranoid and assert against overflow for an increment. This is very simple because an, an overflow would give us exactly zero here. Mm. So let's just let's just try out if this works. And we will um, look for a function that does that does a regrowing. Uh, one where we know that it actually happens. <clears throat> this one, I, I think the, the ad segment, this does grow. Hate class, I think currently we only have examples with a single hate class. So this maybe is not growing. But this one could be growing. So let's let's just try things out by by printing the block info table. And we should see we should see the reallocation happening in this way. So let's see how many syntax errors we have. A lot of syntax errors, it seems. Why? Because I messed up the quotes. Yeah, I messed up the quotes. That is bad. Uh, 
Okay, we have an abort. So I forgot about something. Assertion failed. Line one, four, five. In memory CPP, of course. Oh, yeah. Stupid. Of course, this failed. This was my reminder to actually implement something. So, yeah, this will this will move into a helper as soon as it works. This is so crazy how slow this compiler is. Look at that. What is it doing? Is it still building something? Building CMake project. It's going completely crazy. 90% CPU. This does not seem normal. People, what is going on? Has my code killed the compiler? I could be. Let's see which which process we are hanging in. Maybe we we. I I think I somehow created a non-terminating loop. Um, that is now hanging my code ge generator. So let's do some process exploring and see which process is hanging. Yeah, it's the it's a, it's a generator, so let's kill it. <clears throat> okay, so we created a problem. That is a bit unfortunate. I mean, this function should definitely return. I'm not sure what is what is hanging stuff up. What could it be? The problem is I cannot just comment this section out because we will get assertions assertion failures if you do that. But it must be something in here because I think the, the other stuff <coughs> is, 
is not actually so the the thing that is doing the the growing where we print the table is not actually executed in the code generator So is it really that this is not terminating? Yeah, let's just find out why. Let's just find out by running it directly. <clears throat> okay, now we have an exception. We messed up, people. He messed up. Or I messed up, I should say. Grow array in realloc. We now do something that destroys realloc is the new size wrong it looks fine 32 we go grow from two to four elements element size is eight this looks all fine Uh, let's see data at Huffman table line. Yeah, this is also okay that this causes it to grow. What did we do here that was so bad? That something in NTDLL is crashing. We are passing a reasonable size. So the only thing that can be messed up is something to do with the pointer. But this pointer, pointer does not point. To a reasonable heap block. And it actually looks like this, because if you if you look at the eight bytes before. they do not they do not look like a reasonable size for a heap block so so let's see data itself um is this two a yeah And it points here. And this does not look so good. So let's break, let's break in this function and let's rerun the whole, the whole thing. So
because this I think is the second time we grow that we saw. Oh, is it, it is the oh, it is the first one, and add Huffman table line because we start at two here. So let's um, let's look at let's look at the table. Two table lines, two allocated. So the array is full. So we need to grow. So how do these lines look like? And this is so stupid. This, I think it does not have any, any simple way to, to show a, a race if I, if I know the, the length. I just, what I found out I can do in the watch window, I should be able to do something like table lines comma two. Um, yeah, and then I can look at, at the two lines. If range length zero, prefix length two, so that that looks reasonable so far. And the table lines, let's look. This is a DA210. DA210. This should be the one we are growing. DA210, yeah. So let's look at the, at the memory. DA210. Now the question is, because we are in the debug build, this could actually be some Sentinel data that the, that the debug build puts there, this FD, FD. But then it shouldn't just simply crash if the... So what is the new size? New size is 32, old size is 16. Here there would be a 16. Okay, but that's too small. Or, okay, no, if it's little endian, it's little endian. Yeah, this could be the size information. And this would be some data by the big debug. Okay, so the first time it didn't crash.
and we got a modified address so the array moved to d7 130 D7130, yeah, we have the data here. And this, I think, is some poisoning put by the debug allocator, which we will also do ourselves actually soon to be independent from the runtime library. And this is probably some, sorry, what, what did I do? Uh, um, Ah, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. This FDFD is probably some guard data put before and after by the debug build. So this is something that is that checks against overruns. This looks all good, I would say. So, sorry that we have to to go so slowly through this so old size is fine so let's step into a new function we found a block actually it was the first block that we found so this is fine so it must be the no the removal we don't do actually so block info this looks how it's the Hoffman decoding table yeah everything looks fine here so let's see we update the pointer that's fine. We update the size. We increment the alloc reallocation counter. So this update was also okay. Oh, that's the problem. This should be new and allocated. I forgot to change this. How stupid. I somehow got scattered or distracted in the middle. Yeah. That cannot work. So stupid. Yeah, now it's fine. Actually, I need to I need to change one thing. The the print that I do of the block info table, I must do this to standard error because otherwise it will mess up our code generation. Because oh no, I mean it. Never mind, it shouldn't run in the code generation. Should be fine. Such a stupid mistake can be cost so much time. That's that's tough in programming. So we should be more concentrated. The compiler is still crazy slow, but this time it's really the compiler. What, what is this thing doing for 10, 15 seconds or so? It's in okay, this is passing. And now let's see if the, if the reallocation is printed correctly. So at the beginning we have all of them with count zero. 
we have here somewhere the JBIG2 segment collection at size 8. So this is a single pointer. Yeah, and here we see it now with reallocation count 1 at size 16. Because I set all the initial sizes very low currently, so I stress the reallocations. And yeah, that's fine. Something that we also probably want to know is what is the maximum that we ever re the maximum number we ever reallocate any thing so we might want to keep track of that so let's do that right now this is quickly done in our overall debug info table we will keep um, a maximum number of reallocations so max and reallocation should actually be reallocations so it And where we here, we will maximize this. So if mem block info table <clears throat> and then at the end when we print everything we also so we print the number of heap memory blocks and let's also print the maximum number of reallocations of a single block Let's try if this worked. Oh, we never initialize it. So let's ignore the outcome of this. Because we need to initialize. I really don't know what I should do about the compile times here. They are so insanely slow. And this is... This is for debug without any optimization. And the files are small. I mean, the, the project is tiny at this at this at this time. I think my largest file currently has um, between five and six thousand lines, so it's tiny. And already, I'm getting mad at the at the compilation times. So. Number of reallocations one. That looks fine. Zero. Okay, so we have this information. That's nice. Uh, next thing is I want to clean up the growing function a bit by moving uh, this crap into. A debug wrapper function. So, how would we actually like to call it? I think we just want to say debug check and update block info. 
from data to new buff, from old size to new size. Uh, actually, old size we can directly calculate here element size to new size file line. That should be everything. And so we will, uh, this will get go away. And this will move into the debug function. So check block info. We will have here check and update block info. So we have the old pointer, we have the new pointer, we have the old size and we have the new size and the core, the location of the reallocation. So we don't need the debug namespace here. This should be fine, except here we here we search for the old pointer, old size. New pointer, new size. Yeah. And then okay who changed our file do we still have the no we have fixed it here okay Th what is a bit um what I'm not used to is that currently I'm trying out NeoVim because it was irritating me that in GWIM I could literally see um, see it writing the lines um, it displayed. So and and this kind of slowness irritates me. And so I'm trying out NeoVim, and it is indeed it is faster in the display update not placingly fast but it's definitely faster so i'm giving it a try so i'm again losing my concentration that's not good let's return the log info here because why not Let's create a prototype. By the way, this is something that I enjoy in my very, not that I enjoy making prototypes, but okay, the control six does not work in my new in setup, it seems. So another thing I'm not used to. Um, what I like is that I can directly copy the function signature and it becomes a valid prototype. So I have no crappy class names here or any qualifiers. The only thing that does not work that you cannot copy are default arguments. So these you may only have in one place. Which is a bit annoying. I think it would have been good enough if they would have insisted on having them consistent right i don't know why you are only allowed to have them in one place as long as they are checked to be consistent so old new old new that's fine We don't need the command because the function name actually tells the same story <clears throat> as it should. Oh, this is the fix I did not. So NeoVim does not reload as 
as automatically as GVIM, that's annoying. Because I fixed, I fixed this here already and saved it. And then when I go back to NeoVim, it does not notice that the file... That is, that is a minus... Let's see if it did. Yeah, now it, it does not check automatically. I don't like that. Lose for NeoVim, win for GVIM in this case. I think one thing one thing I'm really thinking about is just throwing everything that I have into a, si a single CPP file. Maybe pulling, including everything into one because I mean, that's crazy that, that every compiler call takes a few seconds and for tiny, tiny files. That's fine. Yeah, it's still working. So, cleaned up. Cleaned up. What else do I want to do? So now reallocations are handled properly. I mean, what we also will do need to do sooner or later, we will probably have to uh, change this very stupid linear search here in the table for something smarter, like a hash table, once we have more, more blocks at the same time on the heap. Not that I plan to have lots of blocks on the heap, but this, this could become a problem. But so far, no need to change anything. Uh, what I want to have is, I think I want to put some guard or sentinel data at the beginning and end of every heap block that we allocate, uh, because I, I want to be able to do this check against overruns in my own code, independent of the uh, standard library I'm using because not every standard library might have this this feature and sometimes I might also want to activate this feature in a for example release build or something so that's something we could do Shouldn't be too hard. So let's define something memory overrun check. <clears throat> And whenever we allocate something, we actually add <clears throat> some extra data to it, uh, some extra size to it. So here we have size. Now let's create a variable that is called a log size. So the actual, the actual size allocated Here we will report the user size. <clears throat> Here we will also always have the user size and the payload size is also the user size. So, and here we will have
and let's say we ate four bytes at the beginning and four bytes at the end, similar to what the Microsoft debug runtime does, maybe. No, actually that's not so good because we want to keep we want to keep alignment, right? I guess. At least for eight bytes. We want we want to keep at least eight byte alignment, I think. So let's make this eight plus eight. Let's write it as eight plus eight. So beginning and end, eight byte bytes each. So we allocate this. And here we actually increment the pointer per eight. So let's make the pointer a byte pointer. So we have an easier time incrementing it. We actually do not want to align our guard bytes at the end because at the end they should really be byte exact. We, we also want to detect single byte overruns. And so let's fill the guard data here. The simplest thing we could do is always have the same byte as a, as a guard byte. What I actually would like rather to do is to calculate a funny value. Calculate a funny guard value from the pointer. Uh, let's pick something funny like crazy prime number or something. So let's pick a large one. Uh, let's actually Pick one that uses 32 bits or something, or even so. <clears throat> Can we not mark here? Oh, mark. Let's see if we can get such a large one here. Let's just pick one that we like. I like this one. <coughs> I think you can do something like this, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's stupid, but that is, that will be a funny, number and let's get rid of the useless 
so we will always have a multiple of eight at least so let's get rid of some useless bits here so just to have a funny value that is different for every pointer and then pointer So we cast it to u in pointer and then we set that. Oh, that's actually not so nice. And here I'm relying on the architecture not needing any alignments for writing a u in 64 which should be fine i think on x64 i mean the first one will always be aligned because for sure the pointer we get from the heap allocator is aligned to at least eight bytes maybe even 16. let's say may require because the second one we do definitely could could need it so the second one is actually pointer plus the user size Yeah, this, this will, we will also move into a debug inline function. Or not even inline, it doesn't matter. Okay, that should be it. And when we free, of course, we will need to subtract that here or to, to yeah, to subtract. Memory overrun check. Yeah, let's actually. Okay, here we have void pointer. Um, This is a bit annoying. Uh, this, sorry, this should be a constant. We will make it a constant. Later when things work. Um, and here we actually, uh, we should, we should check and here we should use the base point of course and here we will do the check so we will calculate the guard values but yeah we will we can clean this up later of course so we calculate the guard value from uh, from what do we calculate here do we calculate it from the user pointer yeah we calculate it from the user pointer <clears throat> and then we check if this is not equal to the guard value boom we will check separately so we can give separate error messages for beginning and end of the array And a 
and say error memory Let's say heap memory overrun at beginning of block at this is the block pointer uh, then we will give the size information we will give file and line let's do it like we do it in the other a lock line we have too much information it is getting so long but better too much information than too little heap memory overrun we should actually also print we should also print the actual bytes that we see so yeah we should do that how do we do that um expected zero sixteen pry x sixty four actual equals zero sixteen and now what do we need we need we will use the user pointer we will use the size ah okay we already removed we already removed the block info that's a bit stupid here but it's not too bad because we have the free info i mean we could we could rearrange things and then we have expected and actually so expected is always the guard value and the actually is this ugly expression here which we probably should not duplicate So expected and actual. And of course, we will need to test this error message. So we will do a flush on the board here. Never sure if the flush is automatic in this case, but it doesn't help to do it. At end of block. And actually, if this is the only difference of these messages, we should think about yeah we should definitely definitely do this in a loop and because that's stupid to have this complicated error message twice so uh, let's do this in a nice little loop at beginning and end this will be like this so depending on j if j is zero we are at the beginning sorry v 
beginning. Otherwise, we are at the end. The actual value also uh, varies. Um, what's the nicest way to do? I mean, we, we could, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, okay, I did this wrong because if it's non zero, we are at the end. Otherwise, we are at the beginning. So, if we are non zero, we are at the end. Non zero. Why people, is this another mailing problem or do I just not hit the right keys? I think I just don't hit the right keys. So, at beginning end and everything else is the same. So, mm, that's much nicer. Not such a lot of code and string duplication. Okay. Um, of course, we should do all the same stuff for the arrays, but also on reallocation. So we will do this later once we have refactored this into nice debugging functions. Let's first see if anything compiles and then we will provoke some errors. Okay, here we have again the problem with the void pointer. That's why we introduced the base pointer. Okay, it works, but it warning against some problem with the format string. For which one? Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, yeah, this is a problem. This we don't have this. That was a good warning, and still we have a problem. Five seven. Add. This is this one. Beginning and. P is the point of size, free file, free line, gallery, actual. Yeah, I'm missing the percents here. <clears throat> okay, now it's fine. And so now is the time to provoke some errors. So let's mess up our code. I think we can get rid of this one. This one worked. Let's mess up our code. Where's the most interesting, the most interesting one? Um, there is someone where we use the memory alloc sized set alloc will hopefully not screw up our memory this one could be interesting but the long prefixes this could be interesting if we do not correctly calculate 
we do not correctly calculate the long prefix length. Yeah, let's say we mess up our code here and we shift by, we, we calculate too little, too few bytes. We should allocate a too small array. And this should lead to us overrunning the array. The question is just, will this immediately cause a crash or will we only notice later at the end? Maybe we should just do a single byte too little. But let's first try this and, and see how we crash. Actually, I'm not sure if we actually use the, the long prefixes here. Okay, we, we crashed somehow, but I don't see it here. So we crashed somehow, but it probably was a hard crash. Let's try it from the command line, what we see. Because the problem is if you screw up too hard, this after the fact checking will not, you, you won't even reach that. Which is not a big problem because if we crash, we notice anyway in development. Uh, what this check is for is mainly si against silent overruns where we wouldn't notice because maybe for example due to alignment uh, we are lucky that we don't hit this case or something um, no that was wrong not the code i want the xa so this is a rather hard crash and okay this is not how, how did this work i don't remember how do you get the error level it does this only work in batch files I mean, on Unix you can you can do it like this, but this that, that, that doesn't work here. Um, I don't even know how you get that because that would be. I mean, I could. Does this? I don't know what the command can do. Uh, yeah. Or should be error. Yeah, this this would work actually. And the end does not print. So and echo okay. So at least at least gtest gives us a non-zero exit code. It seems, but it doesn't print anything, which I don't like. Yeah, whatever. So we crash rather hard. So let's make our mistake somewhat less spectacular. Let's just do an off by one error. And we should have a chance to survive that until the, the heap test, the heap check. Okay, we didn't see we didn't see a, a check failing at all now. That's also not so good. Hmm.
why is that? Yeah, now we hit it. Could it be that we just had the, the zero byte here? And we... At end of block. We overwrote. How many did we overwrite? The last one is wrong, and then wrong. Two bytes are different now, which is what I would expect. Two bytes are different. Um, now, if one byte is different, why, why don't we hit that? That's funny. Do we just accidentally put the correct byte there? We put an FF there and then an E0, which I mean makes sense considering what our code does. Why does it not detect overwriting a single byte? <clears throat> Could it really be that we accidentally have an FF? Chance for that is not too large. So how could we how could we check that? After we have filled the long prefix array. Uh, let's do this. Let's um, print the memory block info table and we will break break on that. Actually what I want to have is I also want to have a um, I want to have a core 
and this is already something I think that puts us beyond the features of the standard runtime library that I want to, in between my code, I want to call a debug function that checks all the heap blocks so we can narrow down where a heap corruption occurs. And so let's create this right now, this function. Check blocks. Um, yeah, and this will just do this this kind of loop. And we'll check all the blocks. <clears throat> and this means we can already move this overrun check so I mean base pointer this is we still need this check and remove block info that's good because now we can we can do the check we can do the check of the block right inside there that also then we have more information about the block because we have not yet removed the block uh, info so let's do that Okay, here we, we use the user pointer to do this calculation. Actually, this is the, this should be still the, still the user pointer. Should we just use B by size here? Yeah, that's nicer because then we actually have here the allocation location. We, we could even we could even have an additional info for the checking location. So We have a check block, we have a check blocks. This will also get the file and line information. 
So check blocks will get the file and line information. And in check and remove block, so check block info. I think the check block info can always do also the, we might not, we might want to re rename this and make this actually, yeah. So this finds the block here. And so here we could do a check block, memdi file line. I'm not sure if I totally like that code structure that we have now here, but for now we'll do the job. And this is now automatically included every time we check a heap block, which is rather nice. And the check blocks is something we can always call and it will do a thing. So many problems. Okay, here I think it's called file name. A beginning of block. This is probably not really true. probably made some mistake with the pointer or the V. So which block gives the problem? Oh, we do not. This is something we should do definitely to print um, the description of the block that causes the problem. I mean, that's what we have the descriptions for. So file line. PI description. <clears throat> That's what we have them for. So we see it's the Huffman decoding table. That's funny, we see this FD, 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 FD. This looks very much like what the, the standard library puts there. So we are making some kind of mistake of <clears throat> checking a two. We check. Um, ah, I know, I know what the problem is because we don't do it for the arrays yet. So let's let's fix this right now because, because we need to fix this anyway. We need to fix it anyway that we, um,
And let's also clean things up a bit. Uh, let's clean things up. We will do. So let's also here let's put some small inline functions here. Uh, let's call one a lock size for size. Uh, let's pass the memory manager as a parameter in case we have some dynamically chosen options later. So if, if we have the overrun check, we will add here 8 plus 8. Wow, already a display problem from NeoWin. I'm really, I think NeoWin will not be my choice. That's two, so not reloading files that have changed and having display problems. That's a bit too much for one session. So a log size for size. Then we will have something um, let's call it pointer from a lock pointer. Is this a confusing name or a user pointer from a lock pointer? I'm not so happy with my names here, but and we will have the opposite. a lock pointer from user pointer. Minus eight. And again, I mean, these should really be constants or something, we will clean that up later. Um, but this should already make things a bit nicer. So here we say a log size for size size and then we have this ugly thing gone. Then we get the pointer. Which we can still have as a void pointer now. Here we will say um, the user pointer is the user pointer from the alloc pointer. And this we do in any case, user pointer. The block info is always for the user pointer. And we always return the user pointer. Then 
the guard value is always calculated from the user pointer also. And this we will move to a nice function. Um, and we will call this Let's call it decorate, decorate block. I'm not sure, but we will, we will definitely need the user pointer and we will need the user size. No, this is a U and if user pointer and a U and factory D size. Guard value from the user pointer. And this is something we will also put inline function to have this a bit to have a single point of definition for our funny guard value calculation so this is starting to look a bit like code a bit like code that was written by someone who actually is not programming for the first time. Decorate block. And so here, check and remove block info. So we actually don't need to do this crap here. But the only thing we need to do is uh, to get the lock pointer from the user pointer here. So we can free it. And all the check will be done inside here. So that's already nicer. Um, here we do another allocation. So here we will actually need to get a user pointer. This will be the user pointer. This will be the user pointer. And we will need an alloc size that we need here, that we use here, a lock size, blah blah blah, user pointer, user pointer add block in and we will need to decorate the block. Size is okay, yeah. For the growing, growing, growing is an interesting case. Um, we will need several things. We will need to get the lock pointer. 
a log pointer from user pointer and the log pointer we need to use here for the reallocation. And then at the end we, we will we need to again convert the new buff pointer to a user point the new new user pointer. So old user pointer, new user pointer. User size, user size, always the user size. Um, always the user pointer. And we will need that's interesting now. Okay, so how many bytes does reallock copy? It knows it knows the old size, it will copy the old size. So it should also copy the guard. So we can check the guard here. The old guard, but only if we are growing. And we are growing. And this is something that we know because currently we are in a in a growing function. It's just something let's let's assert it because uh, currently this only works. Hmm. Oh, but yeah, it should it should work because we have the old guard value calculated from the old user pointer. That should work. The old, oh no, but. For realloc, we really should do the checking at the beginning, the checking of the block, and we should not do it inside here. Otherwise, things get complicated. That's annoying. That is annoying. Let's sort it out a bit later. So, let's so now when we sort it out this will also no longer be necessary this condition so that's a bit of a problem so free is easier so let's let's handle the free this is the user pointer that's fine but here we need to get the lock pointer from this one and then free this. So now we mostly have the problem that we with the reallocation. Uh, here actually we can reuse our user pointer. We will let's call this also user pointer. User pointer. Got rid of the user pointer. User pointer. Check block, yeah. This should actually, this should actually become, a close body of decorate block. They belong together.
So the one thing that doesn't really work so well is our check and update procedure. Check and update does not work so well because we should do this, this at the beginning before we do the actual reallocation and we should do the update later. So we need to split this simply into two functions. So let's turn this into update block info and we actually pass in the block info pointer. I'm not sure if we will need the old stuff, but let's for now keep it. Uh, this will actually be something that we we'll do at the beginning of the growing function before we do before we do the actual reallocation so before we do any stuff we will check the block info at least we also check the guard the guard bytes then once we have everything we will redecorate the block for the new size. We should probably also add the size somehow, calculate the size into the guard info for better checking for the relocation. And then we do just the update um, um, using the block info pointer. I think, yeah, that's, that's the cleaner structure now. Mm, this will be void because there's no sense in returning, returning the block, update block info. This gets the block info pointer. probably call this bi or something, I don't know. <coughs> yeah, I think now we, we are approaching something that might work. And that's not too ugly. So we first check the old stuff. Ah, we don't have the old old point and old size here. That is something we need. And that's not so nice now, but uh, we have to do it. So old size is this one. And the old pointer is the star data. So. But here we can use the old size then, old size, new size, yeah. And this does not check, not check the guard info. So this is something we should actually note here. I'm not verify the integrity and see of the block with the old 
address and size. So we know where we are at and we don't return this one. So did we make consistent changes? I'm not at all sure this, that this will work out of the box. First, we have lots of lots of syntax errors. Missing cars, like always. The block info. Oh yeah, because here we are not in, we're not in debug namespace. We should move this probably to debug namespace. Okay, here we... I really took the... I don't know if... I, okay, here I took the... The problem is if I take it here, all the others should take it too. And right now it's not really needed. So let's let's remove it. Yeah, this is again, this is in a debug namespace. Pointer is undeclared because it's actually star data. Check block. Um, this is check block. This is an impl now currently. So the namespaces are not really clean currently. Must return a value. <coughs> Sorry, that's absolutely right. Um, here and here we need to return the user pointer. <coughs> Okay, we get some we get some problems here. So let's first try what happens if we do not define the overrun check. Oh no. Near Vim, you are testing my patience by not reloading files that changed. Let's see if things still work when we do not do the new checks. Actually, we still have our bug in the code that we introduced in order to check the checking. But yeah. This is exactly one of the cases where we now we have a bug in the code and it's not um, it's not becoming visible and that's exactly the case we we want to address that we have a silent overrun but at least things are working if you do not do the overrun check. Yeah, we might have a problem. 
I think I forgot maybe one thing in the growing in the growing we of course also um, also for the new size we need to convert the new size to a new alloc size So that's one thing we, we definitely need to do. Otherwise we always have everywhere the user sizes, but the actual allocation size may be larger. So let's re-enable the test, the check. Okay, now we are at least passing, but we still have this strange, now we are passing. Um, that's good. So the adding the, 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 adding the stuff to the arrays and so on made everything consistent. So now, all our blocks are treated the same way. All our blocks are treated the same way. This should really move to some sub namespace stuff. But what's still a bit mysterious Also, these check blocks, this is running, but this is not, not noticing this problem. So let's see if we, again, if we are not off by one, but off by two, if we can catch the problem. Yeah, as soon as we are off by two, we catch the problem. That's funny. Yeah, let's build this. Let's build this in another way. Let's just explicitly. So here we do the mem set. Let's explicitly overrun the array. That is an explicit overrun by one byte. Okay, now we don't really know whether this, let's see if this, okay, that's really a hard crash. Now we are crashing really hard ah, because we do it before the stupid me. Of course, if you do it when the pointer is still null. Funny, we are not catching the single byte overrun. Let's overrun by two. And actually let's, let's immediately do the Let's immediately do the check blocks. Yeah, 
we catch the overrun. And it is in the second byte, we see it here. So the 99 is untouched and then we have a modified byte. Here a E and here two A. The two A is exactly the 42 decimal that we wrote. So this is working. I, I'm missing something completely stupid, I'm sure. Because if I do overrun by one byte only, okay, now it fails. That's fine. Maybe we are really never using the. Do we calculate one byte too much? Because now this is, this explicitly, this finds the problem. No problem here. So it seems we, could it be that we are really repairing the, Repairing the byte just accidentally. Now we notice it. Zero nine nine zero two A. So that's working. That is working That is so strange. Maybe we really never write maybe we just never write to this byte for some reason. Let's always write to the last the last byte So let's reduce by 1 and let's write something to let's overrun by 1 byte We catch it. We do catch it. That's good. So some things are working. I just want to really understand why, why. So the memset should be fine. Let's not explicitly overrun here. Here the check should, so let's put some markers here. Here the check should still be fine too, because this is consistent. 
So maybe this loop really does not use up all the arrays. So let's check that. A long prefix offset. That's a bit complicated, this loop. Hmm. Uh, let's put an assert here for debugging. Uh, let's assert that this is really not only smaller than the number of reserved bytes, which it should always be, but actually smaller than that minus one. So that, that condition would only be true if we never touch the last byte. Yeah, it seems to be really, <laughs> that's funny. We really never touch the last byte, at least in this, in this case. Here, okay, here we actually hit this case. So let's see if we get rid of this assertion, if we also hit the overrun check. No, we don't. People are going crazy. So we are hitting this condition. So we let's even let's make the check be even more specific. Let's check that we definitely definitely write the last byte here. Ah, sorry, that was the wrong check. Um, I need to negate. Let's check that we definitely address the last byte of the array here. We do. Okay, but that is already the, the reduced one. That is already the reduced one. Okay, still hitting it. Still hitting it. So we definitely write this byte. Could it be that this is the next thing that we check? Could it be that we are just by accident writing the, the correct value to this byte? That would be so insane. 
So let's print this to standard overwriting with so that's the old one That's the new one. Yeah, it's not not the same. I don't get it. What are we doing wrong? Check the blocks. Let's also let's also print the pointer that we are actually using. And then let's print where where the where our check block code is actually checking. Yeah, we're checking definitely the 494B1A. So we are checking the correct address. So let's also report this. I'm going crazy. I'm missing something probably so obvious. And ladies and gentlemen, I have the feeling that this stream will not go to YouTube because 
It's getting so pathetic. I am again. Neovim, this is the last session for you, I tell you. This is your last session, definitely. Never again view Neovim. I prefer the slow, the glacially slow GVIM that does not mess up my work. So, God Valiant Actual. We are overwriting the bytes and then Crazier and crazier. Our code claims that is overwriting CD with this one, but the CD is still here. Oh, uh, I'm so stupid. Stupid. We are not. people. I am so stupid. Of course, this code is not overwriting, it is oring. And so it just happens that we it just happens that we only or a single bit. And this bit is by chance set. I mean, we have a 50%. If we, we only set a single bit and we have a 50% chance that this bit is set. You know what this is? This is a case for randomizing this guard data. And this is something that also the standard library doesn't do. Because I think also, also the, let's check this. Let's try Let's try this. Let's try if the debug standard library also fails to catch this. Because it has this FD value, I think, at this place. So let's leave the bug inside. We can also let leave this one because this just doesn't do anything if we disable the check. Um, all of this is just printing stuff. And that's also just a check. So let's see. Yeah, the standard library also does not catch this bug that we introduced intentionally. Because it also uses by chance a guard value that has the highest bit set and we set here, I think we set the highest bit and the next highest bit. So actually we had a chance of, of we had a chance of 75% of catching this and we didn't catch it. Um, 
This is a strong case for randomizing the guard value. The important thing is, if you randomize something in your test setup, it is crucial that you um, have good control over the randomization and the seed because you want to keep reproduci reproducibility. And I already did this in past projects. It's, it's, it's absolutely possible to keep reusability, uh, reproducibility. If you do a good job of recording, recording your, your random seeds. And if you, um, if you have a clean deterministic pseudo random generator that is not um, not used by other things and only used for the test values and so on, then you can do it. And I think right now this is really a strong argument for this innocent line here can easily overrun without you noticing it because it sets maybe only a single bit or two bits. So let's just <laughs> let's try some Let's try some randomization. And we will actually Yeah, we just do just do a plus here plus mem um, guard value seed so right now my idea would be to not To not do the randomization inside memory code here, but inside the unit test code. Because in our test utilities, first we already have a good random generator in the test utilities, which currently does not randomize by, by doing time or something like that. Um, so we should definitely print this guard value you see it in our errors that we generate here. So all of the errors that somehow depend on, on these guard values should definitely print the guard value you see it so we can reproduce things if we have a problem. So we print it here. Do we have any other? I don't think. Let's check. Let's see where we do use these guard values. We use it in the decorate, but the decorate never fails. The check block this is the one we just did. And that's it. So if this fails, we will report the guard value. Um, we will set the guard value to zero here. And let's just try this out 
let's randomize it. Actually, which test we are running here? Which test does the override? How was this? Oh, that's the wrong. With zero, we should still have the same behavior. And actually now we have deactivated the tests anyway. So, but let's just check which unit test this is. Let's tolerate the enormous compile times that we have here. So we are doing this in test long prefixes, which makes a lot of sense that this happens in long prefix test. Well, not in this one, I think. In this one, the other, we have the memory manager. And let's just <clears throat> try it out first in a stupid way. Let's just let's just set some seed by hand and let's reactivate the test. How can we make a mistake with so little code? Yeah, that's that's one of the downsides of if devs that you don't actually compile the code. Um, which is also a, an upside because you know that it will not have any influence. But, um, Now I need to remember in my NeoVim to, okay, now we need a memory pointer here, memory. and then we need to find, can we get, find our references? Does this work? Yes, mem, mem. Yeah, <laughs> now we find it. We find it because 8D has changed to CD. There is a, a one bit set that wasn't set before. <laughs> In the end, you know, as embarrassing as today's stream was so far, um, I think that all of this happened was was really good in the end because it also demonstrated to myself uh, that you really should randomize these guard values because i mean normally you think you do a funny thing and you have these strange guard values that depend on the pointer and so on so we even did this with the prime number so we get different guard values for different arrays and still you hit a case where because one of the bits is always set for this for this array you don't see the problem so it's okay so i need to reload everything because this stupid neovim doesn't do it by itself which i don't understand and now 
uh, let's also, yeah, this is also reloaded. So let's do some real randomization here. Um, how is it called in our test utilities? We have a nice Mersenne twister in our test utilities that has currently no way to get a random uint. So let's add it. Random uint 64, random data. Um, which, let's see. Currently we only have the int 32. Is this what we want? Yeah, this is a full u int, a full u int 32. So we should get 64 random bits this way. And also let's, um, the random init, I think, I think currently I use a fixed seed. Uh, we, should, we should have the option of using the local time here or something. or something even better. But time for non-security purposes, time should usually be good enough. Um, Boolean. Um, how to call it. <clears throat> I'm actually not sure if currently I call this at all, so this is not, I'm not clean there probably. So how can we get a sub-second time? Actually, could could we just the RDTSC? Could we just get the RDTSC? T 
tick count in milliseconds. That sounds good. Get tick count. That's good enough for us, I think. Milliseconds are good enough for us. Oh, of course, we will later do this in a nicer way that we don't have to do it in every test in this awkward way. But for finding out It works. Let's do something like that. Why do I make so many, so many mistakes today? Okay, here we found it. We had 0, 4 and it said, yeah, we said 2 bits. So if we now try the randomization, we should expect to see the mis to, to find the error in, we should expect to find the bug in 75% of cases. So let's see if this, this is what we observe. No, no, why do I always start the code? I cannot start the code. So, um, let's somewhere write this down, what we see. So, we, we found it. Didn't find it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Didn't find. Did not find. Found it. Yeah. I think that's. Missed two, three times. Yeah, that that is reasonable. So in about one fourth of the cases, we do not see the bug. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Neowim is killing me. So let's start to clean things up a bit. Because now we finally have something like a success. So all of this can go. That was just for finding out whether we are completely crazy or not. Uh, this can also go because now we should actually find the problem at the end. So let's for now leave the bug in let's 
let's leave the bug in uh, this will go but not yet now I'm not sure if, if, if in the printing we should actually also call the check blocks. Probably it's it's always or check block. I mean I mean probably it's always better to check, right? When we get the opportunity to check. Why not check? I just noticed that I have here a stream pointer that I call file and I also have file names that I call file. That's not so nice. Sorry. Can't hurt to check it. Yeah, I'm not sure whether to move this into an even deeper nested namespace. It's currently in Imper. Do we still have some crap here? Well, it's looking reasonable, I think. Reasonable. Okay, here we could also clean this up a bit. Question is, I mean, this we should probably probably do this together with this we should maybe even do this inside so let's so move this inside check and remove and also for the adding Probably this debugging stuff we want to move this inside. So this one this one Yeah, I think it will be nicer to move these inside. Uh, here we, because here we, actually here we already do it, right? Yeah, we definitely should, I'm not sure, we, we definitely should move this inside. Because in the update case, we already do it. So 
let's move this. Oh, so this one, we must not forget this one. So we do not have any exit points here. So this add block, this is already done. Check and remove block, that's the next one we remove. Update block. So this is the next one we remove, memory free. Um, check and remove. That's the next one. So wherever we do this, we don't do this. And it's again a little cleaner, this stuff. Yeah, we could, we could do this directly inside here. So, but what I find really nice is that now we are getting into a position where we are better, better than the debug standard library at catching things like this, this subtle overrun by one byte. That's nice because so far I thought we would only duplicate something that the debug standard library already can do in this tool chain and that we just are getting independent from independent from this particular tool chain. But it's actually more than that. So now once this is nicely integrated into the unit tests, which I will not do today because I'm getting too tired, we are actually doing better doing better at, at detecting these kind of mistakes than the standard debug library. That's nice. So I think things are clean here. They maybe still compile. We still sometimes find a mistake and sometimes not but at least we have a good chance to find it and previously we didn't find it at all so let's see if the error message is fine heap memory overrun at end of block blah 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 it's a long Hoffman prefix array we see exactly where it was allocated we currently don't see where the check was triggered that is something I want to add because that could be that could be very useful to see uh, what is the code that triggered this check. So we will actually add file and line information here, which we already had, I'm stupid. We already had that. We only don't have it in the print blocks of a table. Um, so I actually have this information already. I just don't print it probably. So check block already has this information. Yeah. 
So I think this is all working fine. We can get rid of that. Yeah, the Ireland exorcist, this is still a topic. I mean, we, we wouldn't need it. We just are lazy. So because it's so much easier to check the whole uint 64. Um, so we could do it like this to be locked at and checked at. We report it like this. We report it like this. Let's see what we what we get. No, oh, my view is empty. So allocated at uh, and okay. Why? Why not? Why not see this? Ah, oh, no. Allocated at four four seventy four five. Let's see what this four four seventy. Yeah, this is the location, that's fine. And 4592, that's the free, yeah, nice. So when we freed, we actually noticed that something went wrong. And we could call some checks in between, so that's also a, an advantage over the standard library. We could call the checks in between if we are debugging some nasty problem. And we would see whether we have any overruns. Okay. Now I'm getting happier at our results. The overrun check is working now. I mean, it was actually working all the time. It was just that we hit a really nasty case where it was actually not even a, a one byte overrun. It was a two bit, two bit overrun. Now, really what, what remains is to integrate this nicely into the unit test um, setup that we have. Because right now we are really randomizing this by hand. And I need to think of a nice way. I, I probably um, want to have something like this. Um, test memory, init memory, something like this at the beginning of every test that uses memory and something like test memory, finalize memory at the end. Uh, this could even be something that we put into the setup and tear down um, or of, of G test or we do it per unit test, I'm not sure. And this would, this would do the, the randomization. And also what is very important, uh, logging of random seed. <clears throat> I mean, we do it here. So we do see the guard value seed here. So let's see, this should be different every time. Yeah, it's completely different. Um, so that's, that's nice. 
that we have this here. We also have the pointer here. We also have the card value. I'm I'm just having a bit of doubt if it's a good idea to really have it depend on the pointer. Now that we have the seed, I think now that we have the seed, it's probably not such a good idea to have it depend on the pointer. because the pointer could be randomized in an uncontrolled way. That's something to think about. So it could be smarter now that we have this nice card value seed to make this independent on a pointer, but maybe, for example, dependent on the size. Because the size should be perfectly reproducible. And we already have some entropy from the guard where you see it. So we don't need the pointer for entropy here. I think I will probably change that. But I'm a bit too tired now, I think. And So let's, as the final step for today, let's remove the bug we introduced. To make everything correct again. And yeah, I think when I put this stream on, on YouTube, I will Probably, probably only put the second half st starting roughly with the realization that we really have um, an undetected, undetected overrun here because we just happen to uh, to set bits that are already already set. Yeah, this was just sketch sketching stuff. Let's see if I change the buffer, does it reload? Yeah. Actually, I did not only change the buffer, I also uh, told it to reload. So. so now no errors, yeah, it's all fine. So let's repeat everything. which takes forever. Okay, let's actually leave this open. So, goodbye Neowin. <clears throat> it was my last session with you, I think. <laughs>